to news. Joining us now, Mr. Netanyahu's former chief of staff, George Birnbaum. Mr. Birnbaum, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Clearly, this has not worked out well for Israel. Whatever the legality may be, this is a public relations, a political nightmare that isolates Israel. Was there any alternative? Why did Israel not let these ships go through as it has let other ships go through? You know, in hindsight, it's easy to say that it didn't work out well. However, Israeli intelligence uh, had information that several of the ships in the flotilla were purchased and sponsored by the organization known as Insani Yardim Vakni, which is a internationally known terrorist uh, sponsor, including by the Obama Treasury Department. They're in fact labeled as a, a, a special designated global terrorist organization. So if in fact some of these ships were sponsored by this group, then one would have to assume that there is a chance that Iran, Syria, others would be trying to smuggle weapons into the Gaza Strip to Hamas to have a terror attacks uh, acted out against Israeli citizens. The, 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 so in Israel's mind... The, the, the logic yes. of what you're saying is certainly correct. What I'm looking at right now is simply the practical implementation of this, knowing that every time you stop a ship in this manner on the high seas with that many hundreds of activists, you're in fact asking for a public relations nightmare of this sort that has resulted. Was there no alternative? Stop the ships some other way. More than a week ago, the Israeli government had urged the ships to come to Ashdod first, have the cargo inspected, and if in fact it was only humanitarian aid, for the cargo to be allowed to enter into Gaza in its entirety. This, this started over a week ago in terms of the Can this you request. For one second, the request just, was denied. Just to clarify, has that sure. in fact been done with other cargoes that have been on their way to, to Gaza? I believe it has. I can't give you a specific example, but I believe it has been uh, the case where, where cargo has been inspected before entering Gaza, and in fact it was humanitarian aid was allowed to continue. And, and in fact, Israel said, if you don't trust us, you can have the International Red Cross, the United Nations, any organization you designate, take the, take the goods into Gaza. So and, and this now, was a again, case again, where again, they were not asking to not to... But, but I, I want to draw two sure. conclusions from the refusal of, of these potential terrorists, as you see them. To, they said no. One, it, it, it improves the likelihood that in fact there is contribution band on board because otherwise they would be willing to say yes but two it increases the likelihood that something will go amiss when you board the ships so doesn't that at that point say we've got to come up with a plan b stop the ships by the ships by throwing nets over the propellers a whole series of other mechanisms you had created Six ships were boarded that same night. On five of those ships, there was absolutely no incident. This one ship, uh, the one sponsored by this terrorist organization, did have the incident take place. So five out of six boats that were, were, were boarded, boarded without incident whatsoever. Well, look, as you, as you can tell, I laid out a legal foundation for what Israel did, and I'm sympathetic to that. It just seems to me that what we've got here is a public relations and a political problem where, once again, Israel is being isolated. The United States government is being, at best, muted in its support. So what is the next step? How do you get out of this problem? I don't know that you get out of this problem. This is, this is an ongoing problem where Israel is under constant threat and needs to do whatever it deems necessary to protect its citizens. Uh, Israel is literally between a rock and a hard place. You've got You've got surrounded by people who want to see its destruction, and Israel continually is on guard for any type of weapon entering into uh, Gaza or the West Bank that can be used against its citizens. I don't know that they could do anything differently. There have been reports that there has been a shortage of uh, humanitarian resources in Gaza since the blockade has been, been in place. Does Israel dispute that? Has Israel impeded the flow of water, food, medical supplies in any way, shape, or form into Gaza? Israel itself has shipped in uh, supplies into Gaza uh, over the, uh, the, the land border between uh, Israel and Gaza in the past. So this is not a matter of Israel having a dispute with the people of Gaza. It's Israel having a dispute with the leadership of Gaza, which is the Hamas organization. Now, Egypt itself has joined the blockade. Is, is Egypt has uh, its own blockade uh, of Gaza. Did the Israeli government communicate with the Egyptian government before it tried to intercept the, and board these ships? I don't have any information about that. Would that not itself be a smart way to move forward? In other words, say, look, we are in joint, we have joint purpose here. We are together blockading uh, Gaza because neither of us trusts Hamas, a terrorist organization. Why don't we do this together? Why doesn't Israel ask the Egyptian government to intervene, to intercede to itself, perhaps board these ships and therefore shift the burden of, of, so that uh, some other government walks into this trap? I'm not privy to the, the internal conversations. That may have, in fact, happened. Like, it would seem to me a matter of, of, of course, of smart course for the Israeli government to have taken, and they may have had those discussions prior to this incident. I can't tell you if they did or they didn't. All right. Uh, if you could hang around as well. Thank you for, uh, for those uh, answers, and, and uh, hang on. We may want to come back to you in just a moment.